going to look at his uh, front armor and shoulder armor in this set. And off camera, you can kind of see I brought in a pretty uh, basic shape for his head. And then I kind of forced that geometry around. As you can kind of see uh, where that hole is and his, uh, kind of where that jawline is on that mean, evil looking face that the armor is made up of. Yeah, the geometry gets pretty stretched in there, right there. Um, doesn't really matter though. Um, Z ZBrush can usually throw enough polygons at it to correct that kind of stuff. But I uh, basically just forced it into the position I wanted, and now I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup. So, a lot of move tool. Got it to look mean out of that basic shape that I brought in, and now I'm just going to refine it a bit. It's basically just this mechanical looking skullish thing and it's using those knobs that I made earlier on his belt to kind of uh secure him in place. And I don't know how much more of this armor I'm actually gonna include because it is still basically the same basic techniques that I've been showing. Um again since it's an R2 and I know I've mentioned this a million times before but uh trim and polish uh weren't included in R2 so when I was making this those weren't available but uh, this would have been a perfect candidate for a trim and polish, so definitely check out. Uh, I think it's at the, probably at the beginning of this DVD, uh, the new R3 features. But in lieu of that, um, I'm using the flatten um, slash 3. You can use slash 3 or the damn standard brush that's in the light box. And I get the same effect. Uh, but here I'm using the flatten and... Uh, just smoothing. And again, this armor doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's a little dinged up and it, it, you know, it doesn't look manufactured necessarily. It looks like maybe it was hammered into shape, which is fine. Um, but if you did need more of a, a car like finish, you know, or something that, you know, did look manufactured. Definitely use um, that polish brush, you know, it's kind of what it was made for. Works really well in those kind of situations. Since this thing doesn't need to be perfect, uh, flatten uh, work, works fine. It doesn't need to be uh, crazy finished. In fact, it's probably better that it's not uh, perfectly finished. It might look a little out of place. So... And using the slash three brush to kind of really uh, dig in some of these lines. Really add some contrast between the pieces. And it's another vaguely uh, skull-like piece of armor on this guy. I think that'll be three, <laughs> three weird-looking skulls he's got on him. And again, I didn't concept any of this out. I'm just kind of making it as I get him in there. I have a vague idea of what I want piece for piece, but luckily this isn't a character design DVD. So just bear with me. Kind of making it up as I go along. Uh, again using that layer brush technique I talked about earlier to distress him. And up at this very top part, uh, I try to keep as much stuff as symmetrical as possible, just so if it was to be game resed, uh, you could use as much of that texture map as possible to, um, you know, maximize your texture resolution. Uh, but every once in a while, it is a good idea to kind of break that middle symmetry line. And um, that's what I did up on his forehead, was just to kind of break that perfectly symmetrical look, but still maintain uh, some textile density. Uh, if you are, if you were to use, you know, 
had to keep it under under control for a game res mesh. Uh, but if you do do asymmetrical things in ZBrush, make sure that you know you you remember to turn your symmetry back on when you're not working on an asymmetrical part. And again, that's just by toggling with X, the X key. And we're going to do another little metal clasp. Well, again, smooth, flatten, inflate. And add a little noise. And here's a shoulder armor. And again, that's just a real simple shape. And I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like, but again, just kind of wing it. And again, I'm not using a whole lot of new techniques for this armor creation stuff that you haven't already seen, so we'll probably uh, fade between major steps just because there's no point in sitting through this uh, again and again and again. So I've got my smooth modifier turned off, and I'm uh, sculpting the shapes out and moving where I need to to get a rounded edge but still maintain those hard edges in lieu of having the uh, smooth group importer, or not having it, rather and not using the uh, crease edge techniques that are uh, built into ZBrush. As you can see, I'm rounding those top shapes out, but keeping the smooth modifier off so that those hard edges will still be there. And I'm putting another, <laughs> another vaguely skull-like shape on his shoulder here. Just cover him in skulls. Skulls are cool. Fun. And just blocking in what the what the shapes in the armor could be. That was kind of a large jump forward, but you get the idea. Not not using anything no no different techniques from what I've shown you before. Uh sculpt it in, the divide. Um you can use the trim and polish or planer or flatten to get any sort of hard edge stuff you need. Um, slash or damn standard to uh, get some other shapes. And if you really wanted to be careful, um, you could go in with the move tool and just hit all these angles and kind of move everything into a into a straight line. You don't need a hard edge model, all that stuff. You can use the move tool and it's relatively fast to go through and clean this up. I didn't because again, it doesn't need to look manufactured. It can be kind of it can be kind of sloppy. But um, if you were going for the manufactured look, it doesn't take that much longer to go in and make sure all your lines are even. And still, you know, you can still avoid hard edge modeling at all in your program of choice because I can't think of anything that's much more tedious than that. We're still refining those shapes. And again, this is going to be really, really beat up metal. So I'm not really concerned with the surface detail. I mean, I'll beat him up a little bit, but um, a lot of it's going to be covered in texture when I get to the poly paint. And again, I'm just kind of making stuff. You know, this was concepted, so whatever kind of mood I was in at the time, kind of what ended up 
as a sculpt. But again, you know, you can get in there and just kind of make stuff real quick. It doesn't take that long, so even, you know, if you're just doing it as a concept artist even, you know, you can probably get pretty fast at just bringing in shapes and blocking stuff in just to kind of get ideas down. And again, using that layer brush without a morph target to kind of beat layers into it. And using the standard brush to look like it's gotten hacked a couple times. And all these things will be highlighted in the poly paint, but we'll get there. And as you can see, we I added noise and stuff, but we kind of skipped through that. And this is going to be very similar to what we did on the um, thigh armor straps. We're going to go ahead and have one strap. And detail that out a bit. I'm holding, I think in that one, I'm just holding down shift, which I think I showed you in part one as well, is that you can hold down uh, shift and it'll snap in a straight line from the camera view. We used our layer and morph technique to kind of get those shapes in. And again, we're going to put a little metal clasp on the end of this thing. We'll mask it inflate. And again, this is going to be a pretty small element, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with the perfect cleanup. Again, it just has to read uh, from the distance. You're probably going to have it from the camera, and if it's going to be all full body, this can be actually be pretty sloppy. Not that I'm condoning sloppy work. I'm just saying, you know, again, pick and choose your battles. Put your time in where it where it counts. We're going to move that strap into place, and just like on the thigh armor, uh, we'll clone and append. And again, uh, from an armor uh, standpoint, this just provides a little extra protection, uh, but also maintain uh, helps you uh, stay uh, active. You can move freely. It's not a full metal piece. Not as protective as a full metal piece, but you got leather straps hanging down. It'll protect you a little bit better than nothing, but still let you breathe, move your arms a little more freely. And there with the layer brush again without a morph target, you can just um, add in holes uh, fairly quickly. Different layers of holes. And I'm just going to show those four straps and then merge visible. And that's going to merge them on the one subtool and uh, give me my subdivision levels uh, as well. So you can delete those ones that you merge visible and then append the one that it merged. And then I went ahead and cloned that one. Those four merged. And then I did a uh, 180 degree rotate under the deformation menu. In the Y this time, that's what I really needed. And then uh, move those four into place. And then eventually uh, just show all the straps and merge them all into one subtool. Takes a little bit of time this way. <laughs> 